What's up, people? We are at DAZN HQ, Adi Oladipo, Tony Bellew, and we're going to talk about the five versus five, Matram versus Queensbury. By the way, hopefully this doesn't overshadow what I think is going to be the greatest fight of the year, and that's Dimitri Bivol versus Artur Paterbiev, which is the main event. But then we have five very special fights on the undercard of it as well. Nothing can overshadow that. I was just about to say that, right? Because nothing. that like, is just special. That's the like, You can just have that and nothing. Yes. You know what I mean, just turn up for that and nothing. But Eddie, His Excellency Turkey Al Sheikh, and obviously Frank Warren have decided they want to add a bit more to it as well. Okay. So we now have five versus five. And a few days ago, we found out the weight classes. Yes, we did. Which is very, very interesting. Now, His Excellency has almost done what he's wanted to do, which is pick his own weight class, which is heavyweights. So we know he likes the big boys, so he's gone for a heavyweight. And then this one, what he's done, Tony, is like, this is your wild card to both promoters. Okay. So you don't have to pick someone within your promotional stable. They've gone outside of their promotional oh, okay. stable. Outside the box. And picked everyone. If you are Eddie, who are you picking to represent Matchroom in the heavyweight class? Well, you want... Bear in mind, quite a lot of heavyweights are fighting yes, as well. Yes, there right? are. And you probably want the best available to you who mm. isn't obviously under Queensbury. Yeah. So I would say you're looking towards maybe a... That's hard because as it sits right now, Joseph Parker's probably three. Yeah. Sorry, four. Four. Joseph Parker's probably four and, and the other three obviously above it all tied up. So do you go Zhang? Do you take that risk or do you go Wilder? Which one do you take a punt on? Because on both displays last time out... Not great. No. Not great. I mean, Deontay Wilder's hugely dangerous, but the older version of him. The yeah. one that turned up against Joseph Parker is, oh, is, no, no. Yeah. is no good to no one. No, no good. And, and the Zhang that turned up against Parker, who just took his foot off the gas when he had his man here, that, he, he's not good to anyone as well. Do you know who I'd take? Hergovic. Oh. Interesting. Good shot, though, isn't it? Yeah. Good shot. I'd take him. I would. I'll take Big Bang Zhang. Do you think? But yeah. well, we've already seen that. I'm, I'm... You know what it is? Because those first five rounds against, I, I stupidly tweeted and I got obviously laughed at. But I tweeted after the first five rounds against Joseph Parker, I was like, he could be the best heavyweight out there. Wow. You, and obviously, you, I didn't delete. I thought I'm going to own that. You shot your bolts there. You, you, you definitely shot Andy your Andy Lee, after the fight, retweeted it saying, clearly a man that knows he's boxing. <laughs> I take the L. I take the L, Andy. Me, Thank mean, you very much. Joe Parker is a guy who stays around for the long haul. Yeah. Never gets blown. Well, has never been blown away early yeah. by anyone, and has fought the biggest punches in the game up to date. I, I will say this though: the rumors, and I don't know whether or not you want to believe social media, but the rumors are it's going to be or could be Wilder versus Zhang. I've seen that, and Ooh. I really and I really like that fight. Although I might want to see Hergovic v Wilder. You know why? Oh, because we saw that, didn't we? David Hay, when he was fighting Tyson Fury, he brought in Hergovic and Wilder to spa yeah. 10 years ago. Yeah. And they kicked the mm-mm out of each other. Yeah, and that's why that fight appeals to me. I like it. They know each other. They're not going to need, need to have too much of a feel out period. And ultimately, I think it's going to take someone to really put it on Wilder to draw the fight back out of them. Joseph Parker done a great job of maintaining them and, and, and holding them down and just... Not staying banging range for him to get here, but but just putting it on him enough and then getting out of range. Mm. It was a really smart plan. And then when he was in range, he was too close to Wilder because Wilder's useless up close. He's useless on the inside. He's a mid-range fighter, and that's where he's at his most dangerous. But for me, Hergovic doesn't have that slickness about him. Doesn't have that boxing pedigree that. Joseph Parker has because Joseph Parker's a smaller heavyweight let's be totally honest yeah. and he has to f- navigate his way around these big heavyweights differently whereas Hergovic is also a big man so I just think Hergovic and Wilder would end up being the shootout that we hoped for Alright so that's his excellency's pick which is heavyweight one of Eddie's picks is featherweight mm. Eddie's got quite a lot of featherweights within his stable at the moment some very good featherweights as well a couple of the guys could be moving up to super feather so, super feather sorry so we missed those and Lee Wood and Josh Warrington yeah. but he does have Certain Raymond Ford, yes. who's just won a title. Um, and if you're Frank Warren, you have a certain Nick Ball. Just putting two and two together here, this could happen. Yes. Wouldn't mind seeing that. I like that fight. It's a good fight. Uh, I think Nick Ball's a problem for anyone. Frightening, isn't he? Mate, the boy yeah. just doesn't stop. He's relentless. He's relentless. relentless. Honestly. He's, uh, he, he's just non stop. Yeah, he, he was a nightmare for Ray Vargas. And I think he should be. And this is no British bias here, but I think he should be champion right now. Yeah, I think, I think, he I, I, I think he's done enough. Don't yeah. get me wrong. 
this is an Atlantic Lewis around the Holyfield robbery, but I, I do think he's done enough. Yeah. No, and I think he should be that. champion. Yeah, Nick Ball should be a world champion right now. Yeah. Is it um is it too quick a turnaround? Obviously, bear in mind that he, he's just recently fought June first. I mean, can, can Nick Ball sort of have a break, go into camp, and then fight someone if it is the caliber of a it, Raymond Ford? This it's quick? a big ask. I'm not gonna lie, because fighters need breaks after them twelve week camps. All the damage is done, especially for a fighter like Nick Ball, Addy. Mm. The damage is done in camp. Yeah. The twelve weeks and the twelve, you know, the. the I would assume the 150 rounds of sparring he's done in the build-up for Vargas uh, is where the real damage was done. On the night, he, did, he, he took a fair bit, let's not gonna lie, he took, he took a fair few smacks and lumps, mm. but uh, he gave out more than he took. Mm. And, and But I think that turnaround is asking a little bit. Yeah. Uh, one of Eddie's uh, picks as well was light heavyweight. Yeah. Um, Eddie's obviously, again, got some good light heavyweights in his camp. He, he's given us a bit of a clue here because one of the fights that we did at the Indigo at the start of the year, Craig Richards made yeah. his return and he's pretty much said that Craig Richards, if healthy, if fit, will be on that card. He wanted it to be, I don't know if you remember, Anthony Yard. Yes. And I remember asking you and you said, maybe not yet. It does look like Yard will fight Boatsy, but we are probably going to get Craig Richards on this. Why didn't we get Calm Smith versus Anthony Yard? Oh, mm, that, that, that's a serious one. Oh. Because yeah. Callum Smith, in light heavyweight terms, is ahead of them all. Would you, okay, wait, would you prefer to see Callum Smith versus Yard? I love where we go off topic here, but this is good. We're going to come back. Would you prefer to see Callum Smith versus Yard or Yard versus Boatsy? I know what you want, but I know what I want. As a Northerner, <laughs> yeah. I want Callum Smith yeah, as a versus Londoner, Yard. You know what I want? O2 as a Arena, Londoner, boom. yes, as a Londoner, I, I, I saw a fully gay. Yeah. It's a hometown derby, so I, I'm happy with either one. But personally, I'd like to see Callum because I think Callum beats beats the both of them, mm. uh, but... Callum Smith versus it. Yard would have been perfect for this. Would have been perfect. Callum Smith versus Yard, Callum Smith versus Boatsy, either way, it's just a brilliant just fight. perfect, isn't it? It's a quality, quality fight, but I don't think we're going to see Boatsy in. No, obviously he's a boxer fighter, so yeah. this is obviously Queensbury, yeah, match. So we're Boatsy not going to see that, so... I mean, His Excellency could make, possibly make anything happen, if I'm being totally honest. You That's just, very true. You just That's never know with what the fights that he's made so What of a sudden, breaking news, Joshua <laughs> Watsi has signed for Queensbury. <laughs> it, it wouldn't surprise me. It would not surprise me because what he's doing to boxing is just frightening. Yeah, but there are some good light heavy. So this one, I think, is really open. Uh, mm. Anyone could be chucked in to this one. But, but again, what we, are we should touch Richard. on is, but do we want to see Craig Richards against Anthony Yard? Because is there any relevance in that fight? I, I kind of was with what you were saying mm. um, a few months back where I said we need to see Craig Richards have one more before Yard. Definitely. Because he can't just... With a new trainer as well. Been out for ages. And that fight he had as well was, was tough. Yeah, so I do want to see him in with someone else. So we right. agree then if we're having a light heavyweight fight it should be Yard against Callum Smith? Yeah, I think that's... I mean, you're talking... We're basically creating the greatest fight card ever to exist here. <laughs> right, ever. All right, let's go to Frank's picks. Uh, yes. Frank's picks were middleweight and heavyweight. Okay. Um, Frank has hinted again, all the hints that are going around here, that Daniel Dubois could be on this card as his heavyweight pick. Okay. Uh, Dubois had a really good 12 months. Obviously, Trevor Bryan in America thought yeah. he'd done well against Usyk, and obviously we saw the Gerard Miller oh, fight. Okay. Yeah, so um, I like it. I like Dubois being on there, but I guess the question is, if you're Eddie, who do you pick to fight Daniel Dubois? Oh, you pick Hergovic. Yeah. You pick Hagovich. <laughs> what a card. And I think Hagovich beats Daniel Dubois. Do you? Yeah. I, I really thought what Daniel Dubois going against Jarrell Miller was brilliant and I yeah. gave him applauded and I thought he was fantastic, but he's not going to be Philip Hagovich. I'm still, see, this is, and look, I always will refer to the boxer in you, but I still don't see this Hergovich thing that everyone sees. No, uh, I mean... I've, I've I seen him and I've not been like, mm, you are the I, I fifth best heavyweight. I didn't like him against Zang. I thought he lost. Yeah. So... But I just think when someone puts it on him, good and proper, he he's going to be forced to fight back. And Dubois will, at least for the first five or six of rounds, course, put it on him. Of course, but then I don't think Dubois has got it in him to stop Filip Hegovic. Mm. But I think when the going gets tough... And I mean Credit really to Dubois, tough. though. I mean, you look at his resume. What is Dubois, 25? I don't know we always yeah. thought he's he was He's a baby in heavyweight he's baby. Who yeah. he's fought already? Usyk, Joe Joyce, Jarrell mm. Millet, potentially Hergovic. That's he's, he's got a really solid. good. He's got a really good resume for someone of his age. Mm. But I must say, it's alarming uh, some of the things we've seen him go through. Mm. The Lorena fight was just wow. But I know he came out the other side. Yep. But that's against a cruiserweight, Addy. Yeah. A lifelong cruiserweight. And then we've seen the meltdown against Joe Joyce. And I think he's overcome that still lives with That still lives with me. 
Yeah, okay. And, yeah, I, and I that, that never leaves a fighter. No, I'm not, I'm I sorry. thought I saw it in the, um, in the Gerard Miller fight, but I thought something clicked and no, he no finally got for puncher. it. No okay. big enough puncher. And not relentless enough. I mean, when you turn up and you're the size of a mattress. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I'm talking a big DFS. Well, big mattress. That's two mattresses together, the width and the size yeah. of, uh, of Gerard Miller. He doesn't have the work rate in him to push the pace and force, mm. force them. You, I need to see Daniel Dubois in a really dark place again. On the floor, down, but not not necessarily, you know, hurt physically. I need to see him where he's at. I need to see him down on the floor mentally. And, and well, that, I guess Hergovic is the guy to do that. Of course. We might see Hergovic. And if he does come through that, then I will say, wow. Wow. Hold my hands up and say, Dude, wow. if he does come through that, it will be like a Joseph Parker type year. Yes. Where we're like, oh my God, Daniel Dubois is solid top 10 heavyweight. Without a shadow, without a All right, last like weight class is Franks and it's middleweight. Yeah. And I think this could be, I mean, the rumours have been swirling about so many different names. But I'm going to give you the names that are out there. Mm. Hansa Shiraz, Amo Williams. Okay. Take my money. Love it. Love it. Hamza Sherez, I think, looked a lot better. He's massive for a middleweight. Huge Emma Williams, mentally, if he's on, he's a good fight. But sometimes he does have his own mm, little yeah. um, issues and episodes. But if that is the one, I think both, if you're Eddie and if you're Frank, I think you're both putting those guys in thinking my guy's going to win. I think both think? of them will be confident. Yeah, I do. Wait, wait, who are you leaning to here? You, you... Hamza Sherez. Okay, fair. Is this a bit of English bias? Or no. A bit of nope. Northern bias? Or is it fair? No. Nope. Uh, I just... I'm also unpredictable. Mm. Don't get me wrong, Hamza Shiraz has that one fight where you're like, what was you doing? What was you playing? Like the Bradley at? Skeet one, I think. Yeah. Many moons ago, and yeah. you think, what are you playing at? Yeah. But overall, I lean towards Hamza Shiraz. Okay. And I think he's, with that size advantage, I just. Massive. I mean, he's it's massive. ridiculous, I think. I mean, he's, this guy can massive. literally stand on one corner of the ring and jab yeah. you when you're <laughs> on the there. other side. Yeah. yeah. Two different styles yeah. that might gel wonderfully. But, but as we wrap on this, just in terms of the idea of this, mm. how good is it though? I mean, I think this is fantastic. Just five versus five. Again, we've still got the main event, Bivol versus Baturbiev. Mm. And that's just, I think, whatever it is, it's going to be good fights. Whatever it is, I think this is going to be fantastic. This is what boxing's missed yeah. since Don as King long as days. I can remember. Yeah. yeah, well, Don King made the big fights happen. Mm. He threw the money about. But this is... This is unprecedented because he's bringing promoters, rival promoters together. And that's why it's unprecedented. That's why it's never been seen before. Uh, I, I can't do nothing but tip me hat to His Excellency. I'll do it for you. And that's there it. There you go. Um, yeah. Hopefully we get the full announcement in the coming days. But one thing we do know is that June 1st is going to be spectacular because it already has the undisputed light heavyweight showdown we've been waiting for, number one versus number two. And now... We've got Frank versus Eddie and all their fighters come together. And it should be a good night of boxing once again in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. See you then.